us here in Milwaukee <laughs> on a Saturday afternoon. The Red Hot Golden Eagles, they've won 10 in a row. Dickie B, big celebration when this guy shows up. Let's start with Marquette. What's fueling this team? Well, I'll tell you, Tom Creed's done an amazing job, especially defensively. And they got great guard play. You people are going to love Dwayne Wade. He's the legit big-time PT peer. And then on the other side, Mr. Musburger, Mr. Patino gets the most out of his people. And Reese Gaines is a star. Now, Marquette expects Gaines to post up down low repeatedly. Marquette strategy as we take a look at our Toyota starting the lineup and of course for Patino it'll be northern there's Reese Gaines where's number 22 so keep an eye on that number Brown Whitehead and Miles then on the other side Namaka the 6'7 senior from Sweden joins Merritt and Blankson up front and Wade will work in the backcourt with the point man Cordell Henry and there's the young man Tom Crean, he was an assistant at Michigan State, helped recruit the great Mateen Cleves team. And he has turned this program around, and Marquette will head to the NCAA tournament this year. That is for sure for the mark that they have put together. They're trying to finish high and get a three seed if they can, and even higher as Louisville controls the opening tap deck. Well, Louisville goes as Reese Gaines goes. In the first matchup against Marquette, he didn't score a field goal, Brent, for 30 minutes and then hit four threes in a row. It was 19-0. 19-0 in Louisville. And they Marquette, came back. and Louisville took a lead and then couldn't hold it. And the Cardinals turn it over on their first possession. Well, offensive ability has been a problem for Louisville. It hasn't been effort, energy, and enthusiasm because that is an absolute must if you play for Rick Pitino. Little zone right here. And the point man, Henry, gets it over into the corner. There's Wade. He'll kick it over to the left. Now Wade, the big man in Louisville, trying to keep him under control if they can with this defense. Henry will penetrate against it. Push one up at the free throw line. He's got excellent medium range for his jump shot. He had 21 the other day against Southern Mississippi all in the second half. He was blanked in the first half. Let's see now if Louisville can get Gaines off here early. That's a big key for him. Brown got a friendly roll and tied it up. Well, Brown is a slasher. He's got scoring ability, transferred from Moorhead State. He's an excellent wing player. We're going to see multiple defenses by both clubs today. Tom Green will see some boxing one on Reese Gaines. It's man-to-man -man right now. Henry going in again. Misses this time. One and out. Miles right ahead, and here's Northern runs the floor deck. Yeah, Miles a big-time rebound, and Northern playing that point is a walk-on. He had seven threes, though, against South Florida. Northern did. Side to Northern, he'll jump pass over to Gaines. Gaines misses his first shot, and Wade will put it on the floor, checks behind him, and he's fouled. That's Rick Latino's calling a walk-in violation. Did a great job reversing the ball, Louisville, getting the shot they wanted. The last time these two teams played, 75-71, Marquette wins it by four, and we told you they led by 19. Rebounds the big thing. Look at that bottom line. 47-31. Oh, yeah, and you'll tell you why. Practice the next day, they got a little lesson about rebounding because Patino's a master teacher. Working off the low block, and Miles makes it one and out again after the uh, the miss by Blanks. He's a big-time rebounder, Brent, averaging 10 rebounds a game. Lost a lot of weight. Rick Pitino believes so much in conditioning, work ethic. Gaines loses it. And on the turnover, Merritt will bring it to the right corner. Nice oh, man, a beautiful pass to Henry, cutting off the left wing. Well, you know, a great pass by Merritt, but a great job by Henry with the diagonal gut, moving without the ball. These fanatics love it here. This city is alive, Mr. Musburger. It is alive here in Milwaukee. All right, Crean. This is my first opportunity to watch him in person. A very active head coach as we see the steal. Gaines losing it. Now watch Merritt. He split to the other side. Caught Henry coming in off the left wing. That was the hoop. Now we watched uh, Northern penetrate on the run to eat him up on the inside. Whitehead comes back and his shot is rejected. Great defense by Marquette. And that's why they're 21-3. They really get after it defensively to help one another. 
They really do a phenomenal job defensively. Tom Green was a vital part of the success of Tom Izzo at Michigan State. Tom used to rave about the young guy. His brother-in-law is Jimmy Harbour, the football guy. Exactly. Married to his sister, Joni, who's here in the audience today. Northern misses. Offensive rebound. And again, the defense comes up big. And Namaka comes away with the rebound. Up front now. Penetrating for the layup. Wade misses the shot. But it is an offense knocked away from Namaka, and it will be Marquette basketball. That was a big-time drive right there by Wade. He's sitting. Notice. There's Joni, oh, and yeah. there's his mother right next to him on the left. That's the mom, yeah. yeah. Mom is here watching her first game this year. She traveled over here from Michigan. Tom, of course, attended Central Michigan. Namaka's left-handed shot. Great job in the lane, moving without the ball. Shot selection. Rick Pitino told us before the game. He said, I'm so impressed with this new guy, Tom Green, because the kids take good shots and they defend. Otis George checked in off Patino's bench, number 52, so he's on the floor. Gaines is being sealed up beautifully, so the three ball is not there. But Louisville's got it back, and now Northern will fire and rattle in the three. And they live with the three. Remember when Patino started down at Kentucky? It was Rick's Bombinos that went 14 and 14, but created a lot of excitement with Bell House and Farmer and that gang. Two very active teams on the floor. What a oh. great move by Wade. Spinning in the lane to knock it down. A big time hoop. Gaines comes back at him, kicks off to the right, and knocking it down is Eric Brown, the young man from Lexington. Yeah, Brown is a good wing jump shooter. They run that ball up the court quickly. Hey, Wade sent notice right away in November. They beat Tennessee, they beat Indiana and Gonzaga to win the Great Alaska Shootout, and he was MVP. Very impressive. Henry on the run down the baseline. Good-looking Marquette team, and Louisville hanging right there with him. Look at the quickness of Henry defensively. He is a senior, four-year guy. And banked in beautifully by Northern. Northern's given a lot of quality minutes this year. How to step into a role with a lot of minutes when they lost Carlos Herb. Highly recruited young guy who's had back surgery. Wish him the best in recovery. Good pump fake by Wade. Again stays with it. Double team. Open man. Namaka won't knock it down from the wing. And Louisville comes out on the move. They got numbers. They got three on two. Northern kicks it back down to the wing. And no good. And that's the shot they wanted out of Gaines. Northern did his job. He penetrated. He kicked it out. Got it to Gaines, but it Watch didn't go down. this spin move by Wade, folks. That's a big time move right there. 10-9 Marquette, timeout. Marquette University won the NCAA championship back in 1977. The legendary Al McGuire was their coach. Here today, leading 10-9. Tom Green has done a masterful job. Rick Pitino's 500th career basketball game today, Dick. I'll tell you, it's been a tough year for Rick, certainly with his wife, Joanne, as well. Losing his best friend, his brother-in-law, Billy Minardi, into that situation at 9-11. He said nothing but our best to Joanne and her family. It was a tough year. She also lost a brother-in-law as well as a brother this year. Inside, Namaka makes the layup. Getting wide open, looks inside. But their shot selection is excellent. That's why they're 6 for 10 right now early in the game. They'll kick now to the open. They need this man to start joining the attack. And on cue, Gaines knocks down his first three ball of the afternoon. And that was typical Rick Pitino basketball. Make the extra pass, be unselfish, understand what a good shot is, and then complete it with the good perimeter shot by Gaines. You know, there's the big six conferences. We're all aware of them from the BCS. But in hoops, the one that might rank next might be Conference USA. Great depth. They're going to have their tournament in Cincinnati. These are, of course, two of the marquee teams. Merritt off the side, and it's Louisville's basketball. They'll bring it down and try to take the lead now. Right when you think of the 70s and Al McGuire, what he did, and you think of the 80s and Denny Crum winning the national title in 80 and 86. These programs certainly got great tradition, Mr. Musburger. Yes, they do. Nice curl move. Inside, Muhammad dishes off, and underneath a great drive is Ellis Miles. Great execution. Muhammad gets into the lane, comes off a curl move. They like to get into the three-second area, and Miles gets the layup. If you recognize the name, Muhammad, his brother played for Rick at Kentucky, Nazi Muhammad. Wade forces one. And I want to tell you, Louisville is doing a much better job rebounding than they did in the first game. It is an obvious point of emphasis here today 
And, uh, you know, the numbers coming in, folks, are just the numbers. Louisville, not a good shooting team. Marquette, a good shooting team. But I want to tell you that Louisville, Dick, is not backing down today. Oh, no, they're not backing down. They don't back down against anybody. That's part of his personality. Wait till he gets the players to equate with his ability, and they're going to start the roll in next year. Kendall Bartez coming in, a kid, Taekwon Dean coming in, Garcia. Well, we mentioned Al McGuire, and here's what Coach Crane had to say about his relationship with the former great here at Marquette. Our friendship was awesome. I mean, from the first day we were together, you know, in the June of 99, after I'd taken the job to being with him four days before he passed away in his, in his hospital room. He just uh, had great interest. He showed great interest in me. He knew that I was interested in him, and, and, and not just so I could say I was friends with Al McGuire. I mean, he knew that, that uh, I had a real desire to, to learn from him, and he gave me that opportunity. The championship banner, and I know Al talked to you about the coach. Oh, he did, Grant, when he was having that tough time, and we were talking on the phone, and talked to his beautiful wife, Pat, as well. I remember Al telling me, he said, Dickie V, we got a special guy there at Tom Crean. Oh, Al, you are right, my friend. Uh, you are right. This kid is a special guy, and they're going to keep him here. He's going to sign a long-term extension. So all those other schools can forget about calling him up. Head off the rebound now. We'll bring it back down. He's playing out Locking of control. foul is called. Yeah, right now, Wade is playing a little bit out of control, Brand. He's trying to make things happen that aren't available, and he's such a talented player. But the rebounding story, Brent, as you mentioned earlier, there's the story. Yes, sir. Here. You can see what happened in Louisville. The game Marquette won, and now this afternoon. Louisville banging away with it. Well, last five games, they've been out-rebounded. Louisville's been out-rebounded in their last five games. Marquette's been off a week, and sometimes the rustiness will show for a time. And uh, maybe just a little bit out of sync, and uh, maybe they're working on way back in with David Diggs' three ball. Well, you know what Diggs did this year? He had one monster game against Gonzaga. All he did, Brent, was go five for five shooting threes. That's good enough. Back at the other end, not there, but George is left alone for an easy putback off an offensive rebound, which shows you how the Cardinals are attacking the glass and getting great benefit out of well, it. Well, it shows they're playing aggressive basketball. It's one of the signs of aggressive basketball. George is quick, and he's got long arms. Henry's wide open. Knocks in the 17-footer. He's got the medium-range jump shot. A lot of guys play without that shot. They either have the long-range three or the drive to the goal. This kid's got a good medium-range game. From out of Chicago. Gaines being doubled when he puts it on the floor. Northern attacks, kicks it down to the outside. Brown improves his position and knocks it in for the right baseline. I tell you, they do a great job of getting dribble penetration, try to get into that three-second area, and then kick it out. And when he gets the shooters that he wants in the future, they're going to be rocking and rolling at Freedom Hall. Marquette now spreading the floor a little bit when they came down with this set, and uh, a little bit overly aggressive. And a Marquette foul has been called. The crowd not happy underneath the baseline. We'll take a timeout. Louisville, an eight-point underdog, leads it by one. Timeout. Office Depot halftime report. And John Digger tell you about Kentucky and Georgia, Wisconsin, Minnesota, a couple big ones, and they'll update the Conference USA. That'll be at uh, halftime today. Well, what about a performance last night by Steve Logan, 41. He outscored the whole Southern Miss team. He's got to be the MVP again, two years in a row. Conference USA doesn't get the kind of national recognition he should from Cincinnati. What a blasting they put on last night. Next Friday, they got this team Marquette coming into Cincinnati. Is that zone now? Very active out of that zone, matching up. Brown again, the three balls on the money. Tight, they really shoot the three. They shot 40 of them against TCU. They attempted 37. Not a great shooting team, but he wants them to shoot it. That's the system. You got to play by a system. Eventually, he's going to have the parts filled by guys that are going to make those. In fact, I look for like three to four guys next year coming in who will be starters on his team. New kids. Louisville's biggest lead of the game. 
Wade turns around and they are really keeping him under wraps. He's one of four here today. And hasn't had an easy shot yet. Cross court now to Brown, who's had the hot hand for Rick. And they turn it over. Traveling is the call. And that is three turnovers. I tell you, Rick's kids have done a great job, as you said, finding Wade and really matching up, doing a super job. So he's not getting any easy looks, number three. And this kid is smooth. He's silky smooth. He's athletic. Not getting an easy look at the goal. I tell you, Chicago's been good to Tom Green and Marquette. Good spacing, good ball reversal. Tainer, freshman, bounces it to the baseline. Sanders in too tight, oh, and Henry's going to maneuver on the jump shot. Put back on the offense, no. All white underneath, though. And one. What an ass. Finally, Terry Sanders, the sophomore from right here in Milwaukee. Well, I'll tell you. He's right with it. Brad, he gives him a lot of energy. This kid is an energizer. And you can see why Tom Green sings his praises. Watch him work on the offensive boards. We're going to watch Sanders now come up with the miss. He keeps the ball alive. There he is going back up. Comes off the bench and is a positive guy off the bench. So is Diener on the perimeter. Two fouls on Brown. And uh, so is Larry O'Bannon, the 6'4 freshman from Louisville, replaces Brown, who goes out with those two personal fouls. The Cardinals lead it by two, 21-19, coming down on 10 and a half minutes here in the first half. Sanders to try to complete the three-point play, does not. But they get it back. Henry glides. Battle underneath, and Louisville takes it down. Urbana from out of Yale High School and produced a guy, used the love, the doctors have done, Daryl Griffin. Oh, uh, he was something. What did he do? Something did? else. Listen, the doctors have done. They can put it up for Denny Crown. Look at the offensive rebound totals there. 1980, that was a special team, and they were special in 86 with Milt Wagner and Billy Thompson. Northern on the jump shot, not there. And it's Marquette's rebound. They're starting to exert themselves on the glass now, and Blankson kicks it back to the point. Here's the three from Henry misses and one and out as O'Bannon yanks down the board for Louisville. Mark get a strong perimeter basketball team. That's their strength offensively on the perimeter. But they have some real blue collar guys inside that rebound. Guys like Nam Nam knock him out. Namaka. 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 All his names, but when they find Namaka, Blankson. The three ball is good, and hey, O'Bannon, he's contributed. Number 34, hasn't he? Yes. A rebound, and now he kicks in the three ball, and it's a five-point Louisville lead here. Nine and a half minutes, and uh, Coach Crean just a little bit frustrated over there. Keeps going back to the bench. Namaka's coming back in now. They got to find a way to get Wade some good looks. Namaka's one of those kids that's got great work ethic. He and Blanks in. They work hard on the interior. Guys like Sanders don't get a lot of publicity. Diener, the freshman, is covered up. Blankson now kicks over to the right-hand side, and uh, there's the foul against as John Harris put it down. George got it. He brings a lot of toughness, oh, Harris, to the club. He's a kid, very physical. They do a great job swinging the ball side to side. I can see why they get great shots. And that's part of coaching. And that's what this kid is about, Tom Green. I call him a kid. Only 35 years of age. Uh, hey, and what Dick, a future. Was he one of the great assistants of the last decade? Patino was very, very upset about what happened on this call. And you can see him in the background over there, vocal. It's a veteran officiating crew. Welmer, Wood, and Ware are here. And uh, first free throw is short and uh, very frustrated. You know, Patino has been such a great success at the collegiate level. Providence, Kentucky, and now in Louisville. He did a good job with the New York Knicks. He struggled with the Boston Celtics. That's probably the only negative against him in a brilliant, brilliant coaching career. And he even jokes about it when you talk to him. Uh, we were great today, having a lot of fun with him before the game. He was super with all the stories. And I'll tell you this, he's a masterful teacher, and that's why he's perfect for the college game. Guys like Patino and certainly Calipari. And I really believe that Tim Floyd and Mike Dunleavy and Jeff Van Gundy belong in college. I told seems, you, I... You know, he seems driven today as I watch him on the side. Turn around in and out, and it's Dwayne Wade who is really struggling from the field here in the early going. 
the rebounding total, of course, still shows that the Cardinals are banging away plus four in that category. And that is a huge turnaround from game one. They've held Wade to one of five from the floor. So those are your two numbers as to why Louisville, they turn it over and it's a bad one. They just kick it out of bounds now. And Green would love to get this Marquette team on the right track. They'd love to get Wade going here, Dick. Well, they got to get Wade going because that'll get the crowd going. The Fanatics want to break out to give them that great sixth man. They got a packed house here. Louisville's done a great job taking the crowd noise out. There they are in a matchup, 2-3. You see how they're attacking Wade with the double team once he gets it. Blanks it underneath, misses. But the offensive putback is good from Namaka. Is Namaka one of those blue collar guys hanging around the basket? That's a big hoop. Is this another turnover? Two turnovers in their last two possessions. That'll hurt the Cardinals. Now let's see if Marquette can take advantage of it. They'll go for a blanks and three. And That's it's good. good. That is a five point a turnaround on the two turnovers. Patino is living with the officials. He is working. Patino's still barking. He's got to be careful. He's going to chest man. to chest. They're going to tee here. You got to be careful. He's going to get a tee. They're very patient with him right now. Look at Mike Wood stepping in, a veteran official. Stepping right in. He's such an intense competitor. Did a great job in Kentucky. There's the turnover. And now they're going to run the ball up the court. They got to get this kid in the open court. When he's in the open court, Wade, he's sensational. You can just see his athleticism. Nice pass. Gets it out of blanks and knocks it down from the top of the circle. I thought that was a good bit of officiating rather than quickly bang a guy with a tee. Because I think he had a legitimate argument. This was the scene of a huge officiating here last night in the NBA. The Miami Heat trailing by three, and an obvious double dribble wasn't called. Miami knocks down the tying three ball and then beats the Milwaukee Bucks in overtime. Tough loss for George Carl and the Bucks, and a bad call sent it into overtime. Right now, Louisville with gains on the dribble. He's been under control, but not the rest of the Cardinals, but a little sloppy with the basketball. It was touched by Marquette, no over and back. Louisville keeps it. Nice Down run. underneath and pounding it in was Luke Whitehead, the 6'7 sophomore from San Francisco. Well, a great catch by Whitehead, but what a pass diagonally. Found the open man. They run the diagonal pass, and Whitehead gets the conversion inside. I can't try to tie away. He's just so frustrated, and they've done such a fine job of sealing him up. You can just see he has ability, though. You watch him slide and glide. You watch him put the rock to the deck. And you can just see all the talent that he possesses. He was sensational out there in that great Alaska shootout. Because that was not that I will City. say is I think Crean will tell him that when he comes in and he's attacked like that, kick it quickly out to the perimeter. He's got an open man. Now, watch Patino. He's still working the officials. He's in this game, folks. Time out. Milwaukee, Wisconsin, the capital of the hot dog world. You <laughs> sing her, and guess what? They ran out in Salt Lake. That's right. They only ordered 400,000. They're all gone. So Milwaukee is working around the clock. They're rushing 48,000 more quarter-pound Angus beef dogs out to Salt Lake wow. City and the Olympics. And is she ever enjoying that Angus all beef dog? And yeah. Then that with the popcorn. She's enjoying all that cholesterol. Oh. Hey, hey, what a great Angus. We, you know, we get the fat out of there. <laughs> hey, what a great press room for food. I rate this as good as any in America. And the blanks are now muscles, and the foul goes against Marquette as he uh, went in. They turn it over. You know, Patino could become the first coach ever to take three different schools to the Final Four. And it's going to happen down in Louisville. You watch him in about his third year. He's already taken Providence with Billy Ball, with Billy Donovan in 1987. And, of course, he took Kentucky and winning that national title in 1996. Inside with the pass. And the foul goes against Marquette. Also had him two other times while at Kentucky. Lost that heartbreak in Arizona. They played without Derek Anderson, who was out with an injury and missed the latter part of the season. He could flat out coach. It's so entertaining to talk to before the game. 
Yeah, but you want to talk basketball. I want to talk Kentucky Derby. I know. You want to talk horses. Symphonic, he wants to win the Derby because he's got some symphonic <laughs> blood with some young, young horses. Rick does not have a Derby uh, horse this year that's going to be competitive. But next year, folks, beware. Of not Forget only about the, the Derby. <laughs> talk basketball. Forget about the Derby. Two, three match off. Talk to the Derby. <laughs> You're going to Louisville, my friend. You always talk the Derby. One of the great events in America. The Cardinals get it back. Gains over now to Northern, the three ball, not there. Offensive rebound, but now it goes over to Marquette. And climb the back, Mike Wood with the call, but they are playing aggressive basketball, which reflects his personality. Tom Green's got to find a way to get some screens for Wade. Wade has been quiet here in the first half, and he's the guy that carries them at 25 when they stopped that 20-game win streak of Cincinnati. Marquette was down by five. They quickly tied it up. Forced two turnovers. Now they're back by two. Trying to get that good shot. And Wade has the ball knocked away from him again. They have just done a magnificent job on the leading score for Marquette. And he just keeps on coming. And this is again, and I believe he's about one of six of this game. And uh, he's, he's falling away on his shot right now. He's shooting, he's drifting away. He's not staying with his shot. I just love his athleticism, y'all, and I've watched him so, several times on a tube. You take a look right here. Not going to see the little jumper, put it to the floor. He's got a nice little move. He's going to be running away. He's not staying with his shot. He's a guy that sat out last year, was a partial qualifier. He's one of the top five impact new kids in college basketball. Open three, and it is rattled in by Simon Nadenoff from Bulgaria, the 6'6 sophomore. Nadenoff had a big game his last game. 20 points against the ball. That's better than he did all year. Had a big game against Pat Kennedy. Boy, Pat Kennedy, you talk about struggle city in Chicago. Oh, right? man, Conference USA really needs him to come back. And Namaka takes his game back outside and kicks in a huge three ball. He can go inside, outside. Veteran player. Love these people here. They are really into their basketball. And they were sold out crowd last night for the Bucks. Another sellout for Marquette. Great sports fans in Milwaukee, Dick. I'll tell you, one of my favorites, George Carl. You think about a blue collar guy. Yes, he is. He was that way as a player before he went to North Carolina, and he bleeds Carolina blue. See, there's a penetration, kicks it out, dribble penetration, and there's Namaka with the long range jumper, tickling the twine. They're going to keep attacking Wade till he finds the open man, ladies and gentlemen. Nadekov knocks down another three ball, and that's two in a row for him. He's going to get PT, baby. He's going to get a lot of playing time. He keeps making threes, coming off a 20-point explosion. Look at that, 6 of 11. Remember, they struggled for three-point city. Layup is not there. Offensive rebound, though, from Marquette. Trying to take advantage. The three ball is good from Henry. I like the little guy. And a steal and a putback. A beautiful steal Wade. by Wade, who stepped up defensively. Yes, sir. Quick as you could say, Marquette, he had the deuce. Marquette so working hard on defense. That's keeping them in the game, forcing turnovers. Made it up on the drive underneath. Clark. Offensive foul is called. I tell you, Wade and Henry, two Chicago kids, baby, know how to play. They played AAU ball in the Larry Butler, who's in the house here. That's the jump shot by Henry. And now you're going to watch Wade with the quick steal. He makes like Michael Jordan. I've seen Michael do that a number of times. I've oh. seen Larry Bird do that a couple of times. Yeah, not a bad two player. Two great playoff games. You know, you talked about Chicago and Marquette. I asked Crane, how long does it take you to get out of Chicago? He said, hour 10. If I got a long ways to go, hour 30. But he said the key thing is, I bought the iPass. He was <laughs> stopping those tolls like you would be, Dickie B. He just rolls down there to recruit. Blankson's at the free throw line for him. Henry. And cannot give Marquette the lead. Henry went over to Whitney Young High School, same school that produced Quentin Richardson, now doing a great job with the Clippers. So a big offensive set here with about 4.15 to go in the in the first half of a fine Conference USA matchup. The hottest team, Marquette. Oh, what a great play by Wade. What a great play. Uh, call. Harris will come to the line for the lead. He's out of Illinois, too. They got Edwards, though, but you're right. It was Wade who set it up. Oh, what a tremendous play, Brand. His dribble penetration, spinning and gliding and sliding in the lane. Look at him right here. That's Under what he has control. to do. Yes, sir. If he does that, he will loosen this defense up. 
He's a big-time performer. You think about impact guys who've come in as transfers, or you think about guys like Jarvis Hayes down at Georgia. Certainly, he's been sensational. A conference USA. They got three locks for the tournament right now. Cincinnati, Cincinnati. certainly right here, right, Marquette, right, and, and Memphis. Third. Oh, yeah. Memphis, Memphis is a lock. And I'll tell you another club that'll probably get in. Who do you Charlotte. Like? Charlotte. Uh, Bobby They're Lutz. here Tuesday night. Big game. They match up well with Marquette. Marquette, uh, very uneasy. Should they come out of this one with a W? Uh, everyone around the program says beware of Tuesday night when Charlotte comes to Milwaukee. Great game for you fans to come down here and, and watch one of the biggest surprises of the collegiate season. Dick, who is a bigger surprise around the country than Marquette? You really keep track of all this. Well, I'll tell you right now, you talk about great surprises right down in Miami, certainly. Yeah. When you think of Perry Clark, Ben Holland out at Pittsburgh. But I wouldn't say bigger, certainly, than Marquette. He's done an amazing job. Only three losses this young guy has losing at Wake Forest at Charlotte I mean he's had really a phenomenal year where well, they're struggling at the free throw line oh for six that's oh for six yeah that's that's Brick City baby that'll get you to the losers circle Dick I still think they're just a little rusty from a long layoff you that's, know you yeah. did that when you were coaching over in Detroit at college later with the Pistons a basketball team can get too much time off sometimes well Tom told us that today they also lost at Wisconsin oh. to Bo Ryan Games. and rebound you know what the biggest problem is the coaches put in too many new plays they got too much time on their hands he's got multiple <laughs> sets he showed us over 100 sets they run Rivals. oh Way the high riser jam, baby. Oh, my guy Al McGuire would love that. Would he love to coach this kid? I miss Al. And for the lead, stepping back outside is Simon Nadenoff. That's three three balls for him in his half. And Simon. Louisville up a point. He says, Hey, coach, hey, coach Rick, gonna give me some PT. My name is Simon. He said, Man, I'm on fire. Simon says, Simon says, Play me. <laughs> That's exactly right. You got it, man. Play me. Oh, Henry. <laughs> yes, sir. I got an old Henry Boy right here. They gave me. They gave me an old Henry Boy. inside, and it's John Harris off the feed from Wade again. There's the Fanatics. They give me an old Henry Barr for Mr. Cordell. This Marquette team has a bunch of tough kids, baby. Gaines trying to join the party. Rattles out. Out of bounds. Marquette basketball. Marquette up a point. 236. So we've got a timeout. But suddenly stepping up big is the... Oh, the oh, oh look at that. Lawn. The high oh. riser, Dwayne Wade. And then the pass. Timeout. I mean, they're really struggling right now. I think they've lost like three in a row, but they got a tough break. I don't know if he played today, obviously, but Kelly Wise has been really hurt for them. Langston couldn't get the jam, but drew the foul, and he'll shoot a pair of free throws as he came hard down that baseline. Travis Diener, the freshman from Fond du Lac, down the road from here, he set it up. Yes, Diener set that up. They're exploding. They're attacking the basket. You know, you look at Memphis losing right there. I just see the contact. Losing that game. They got a game on a road on Wednesday against South Florida. We'll be doing that game, Brad Nessler and I. Got a chance to see DeWan Wagner, but without Kelly Wise, they are struggling. Now, is that 0 for 7 for the free throw line? Wow, 0 for 7. 7. Wow. That's Digger style. I saw Digger shoot free throws once down a Ryder. I was sitting in the crowd when he was playing for Ryder. It was Brick City. I mean, I wanted to come and help the guy with his left-handed shot. Well, you were telling that anecdote at you came <laughs> for eight. Uh, <laughs> the guy had one of his magical wins against Marquette when they had a big winning streak. Nate at Hoff has been the hot three-pointer. Pulls it back out now. They got to find him. Nate and off. How about Gaines? He's been quiet, and Louisville's sticking right in. Gaines is only one of five here today. They've done a great job matching up on him, keeping the ball out of his hands. Langston playing him tough. Number zero. Temple with an easy win over UMass today, and Georgia Tech on the road. And a jump ball is the call. Basketball belongs to Marquette. You know, Temple had that easy win. Certainly been struggling most of the year. Don't count them out in tournament time at the Atlantic 10 Conference. I just see the contact right there. Don't count them out in a short run. John Chaney and Lee Greer and that club in their tournament, which they have to win to get into the NCAA. Now here we're inside of two minutes. This is Conference USA. And Namaka 
will come down to the left baseline and get it back and move it to Henry. Now. You know what impresses me, Brent, is their patience and their poise offensively and the discipline. And that is a reflection of coaching. He learned, worked on the Ralph Willard, who's really a close friend of Rick Pitino. Was on one of Rick's first staffs with Billy Donovan, Tubby Smith, and Herb Seven. Diener penetrates. I like that little guy. Getting a lot of quality minutes. Travis Diener on a perimeter. Combination guard. Boy, a three would be huge for the Cardinals right now. They could draw even. They did not. Oh, it's another turnover. It's Diener. It's Henry oh, what for a nice the lane. Pass. Oh, what a pass. shoot a pair. What a nice pass by Diener. The simple little bounce pass. Anticipates well. Steps in the passing lane. They chart deflections. That was all started really by Rick Pitino. As a steal, stepped in the passing lane. Now watch. Head up. Good bounce pass for you young kids. Good angle. Now little Henry goes to the free throw line. From out of Whitney Young High School in Chicago. Now remember now. They are 0 for 8 at the free throw line. This one's going to go in. Put it in the book. Put it in the book. Come on. Put it down. He looks like a scholar. Worked for Ralph Willard, Western Kentucky, also at Pittsburgh. Western Kentucky's got a rising star. Well, where he made his mark was the recruitment of a team, Cleves, and calling the offensive sets for Tom Izzo. The last year as an assistant coach, he called the offense from the sideline as Henry rattles in the two free throws. Yeah, they have all those sets they call up there. Now he's got his own program. And they love him here in Milwaukee. Cardinals need a hoop on this trip. They need gains to shake loose. They are really matching up on gains. Everywhere he goes, somebody's in his face. Muhammad Tickett. Here's Whitehead. The open ring shot wasn't there. Battle for the loose ball. Marquette. Mateo Marquette's defensive ability and their effort defensively kept them in this game because they struggled offensively early in this game. Well, tomorrow right here on ABC Sports, Syracuse faces Notre Dame in a uh, big game for uh, both teams as they battle for supremacy in the Big East Western Division. Texas will take on Kareem Rush and the Missouri Tigers tomorrow, live at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific. Check local listings for the game in your area. We're going to the Golden Dome? We're going to see the Golden Dome? Are you serious? Are we going to go there? We're going to see the Grotto? We're going to see the Lady on the Dome? Folks, I'm going to see Syracuse. Really, I'm not going to let him get away with this. I'm going to honor you. Degree from Notre Dame. Oh, with the tenth foul. Oh, mercy. Oh, there's Henry. He's made three in a row now. You know, Rick's son went to Notre Dame. So, leading the way with 14, make it 15. He's picking so up. So as Wade struggles, then it was Henry who picked up the scoring. Now it's the biggest lead. It's a seven-point Marquette advantage. It's a big possession. You got to put some points on the board to quiet this momentum. Uncle Mo has certainly swung to the side right now of Marquette, the home club. And this 8 0 run, in, uh, and it is obvious that the big thing has been the handling of Reese Gaines, the junior from just down the road in Madison, who came in here leading the way for Louisville. And he has really been bottled up here in the first half. Patino and his staff will have to find a way to shake him loose. He's one of five from the floor. He hasn't been to the free throw line. And hasn't had really any good looks. They've done a phenomenal job defending him. You know, Rick took over for Denny Crum, the Hall of Famer. He was 675 and 295. And what I thought was so impressive, 21 different 20 win seasons. Man, and I'll tell you, played all tough opponents. You know who Crean looks like? Clark Kent. Yeah, he does have a little look there. Rick Pitino looks you like... You know, I think he's going to go to a phone booth at halftime. <laughs> he's pulling a miracle here, man. He's been Superman in this city. There, Gaines. His first free throw there for Louisville. Knocks it down, and uh, that's three, and this would be a huge, huge thing for the Cardinals if they can find a way to shake Reese loose. He wants so badly to do well here today. He's had some great games this year. He's averaging 26 a game in his last four games. He's been an all-conference performer all year long. Green calls the offense as he does on every set, especially when they're struggling. There was a big difference when he started calling the plays in this game on that sideline over there. Going to a little weave up on top. Now it looks like they're going to go to a triple stack on one side and isolate. Nice shot time, folks. Inside of Isolation. 
Trying to get Wade one on one. Trying to get Wade one on one. And he'll hoist it. And knocks the three ball in. What a great call. What a momentum builder. They're going in at 21 and 3. They haven't been beaten on their home floor. Oh, they love them here in Milwaukee. Advantage Wade, who struggled early, but stuck with it and found a way to shake his game loose. And just before the half, he knocks down the three ball. And coming up next, the Office Depot halftime report with John Saunders and Digger Phelps. He finds a way. Dwayne Wade started out this game one of six for the Warriors at Marquette, and then he went to work. Recognizing the double team, he started to pass off. And then when his time came, he would attack the glass up over the top. And finally, in the end, with a great steal, he hit three of his last four, spinning in the lane, and finally, Dick, knocking down the three ball. But on the other side of the floor, Gaines continues to struggle. Dickie hasn't had a field goal since 14.45 remained in the first half. Now, what do you think Rick Pitino might do to get his game on track? Well, they got to get him some screens, obviously, but the bottom line is he doesn't get a lot of help from a lot of people on the floor. Gaines has been played so tough, they really designed their defense to keep the ball out of his hands. And remember, though, this is a kid that's averaging 26 a game in his last four games. I think he'll get going. I just don't know if they have enough around him to offset this team. Marquette is a very good yes, basketball team. How far could Marquette go in the NCAA tournament? I think Sweet 16. I don't see a chance, in my estimation, to win six games in a row and win it all, but I see a potential Sweet 16. Well, let's take a look at our global <laughs> first half stats, and uh, here they are, Coach. Well, we take a look right here. Look at the free throw line. Marquette could have really had a lead if they made some free throws. But the bottom line is Louisville done a good job recruiting in that first, I mean, rebounding in that first half. And the look right here is shoot, shooting the basketball is pretty, pretty good. I tell you, it's pretty tough to talk when John Schumann's banging me on the shoulder. Digger's former guy who is a great player when he played for the Golden Dovers at Notre Dame. John Schumann now scouting is in the house here. You know, Dick, uh, Louisville normally forces a lot of turnovers. In fact, I think uh, they're averaging about, a, well, over 18 a game. And today, Marquette has only two turnovers. Sign of good coaching. Oh, that's phenomenal because you're right. Louisville leads the Conference USA with the forcing of the turnover. They get after people so hard. But this club here has done a good job with the basketball, and that's why they shoot 48%. You shoot 48% and better right now in college basketball, you're in great shape. Whitehead will take the ball out of bounds to start the second half. Louisville was held without a field goal. The final 320 of the first half as the Golden Eagles closed on an 11-1 run to take this nine-point advantage. And Gaines handles the ball, but nothing doing yet. Kick Northern. Gaines off a of fake penetrates and back outside the Northern three rattles out. He did a great job, Gaines, getting the open shot for Northern with his penetration, but the ball go, doesn't go down, and that's been a problem all year. We talked to Rick Pitino, simply tell you, we just have had a tough time making shots. Hey, Kentucky got beat today by Georgia. What a job Jim Herrick has done. He's beaten Kentucky twice, he's beaten Florida once. Wade fouled. He was being double teamed, and a reminder that uh, Tiger Woods, Phil Mickelson, David Duvall, and Sergio Garcia, the big fellas, head the field with Ooh. the top 64 golfers in the world. Go one-on-one. -on -one. The World Golf Championships and Action Show Match Play Championship that begins next Saturday at 2.30. Who are you like of that? I tell you, you got to go with Tiger. He's due to break loose. Right. I go with the front runner, man. <laughs> I go with Tiger. Plus, he was very friendly to me when I met him at the ESPY, so I like the kid. I think I'll take Sergio against him. <laughs> no, no. Likes it, kisses it in. I'll tell you, I'll take the way Marquette's playing right now. They are executing. That's high percentage basketball. Good angles, good posting up. So up 11. And again, that is their biggest advantage of the game. Louisville had one of the miracle comebacks this year when they beat Tennessee. They were down six with about 31 seconds to go, and Gaines made three consecutive threes. Patino said it was one of the greatest comebacks he was ever part of. Well, it's going to be uphill here. In a hostile environment, sellout crowd to Bradley Center in Milwaukee. I'm going to try to go 14-0 here, Brent. 
last, the last loss was in triple overtime. Yeah, the Louisville. Louisville Cardinals coached by Denny Crown. That was their last loss in Milwaukee. Three ball is not there and touch last by Marquette, so Louisville basketball. You know, as a coach, it gets very frustrating because you could only do so much in terms of executing and getting the shot you want, but the guy's got to make that shot. The Armani specials of Mr. Patino. Or are they cold now? 450 without a field goal. They just desperately need games to join the fray here. They got him right now. If they swing the ball to him, they have him wide open on a wing. They were a little late in getting over yes, there. Stick pointed it out. The defense adjusted. Here's the three out in the merit's hand. You know what they don't have, Grant? They don't have post presence. They don't have anybody. Look, he's wide open right here. He's saying, give me the rock. Look at me. I'm wide open. Give me the rock. Give it to me. They get it to him too late, and the defense rotates over, and they're right up in his face. Struggle City for Patino's Cardinals right now. Gaines is one of six from the floor, and Marquette has built an 11-point advantage. I like the role players for Marquette. I like the kids like Blankson and Nakama. Those kids really do a solid job. Don't get a lot of publicity. Turnover by Marquette. They get it right back and score off the turnover, and there is Namaka. Namaka right there with the score. They're making these names tougher and tougher and tougher for us everywhere we go. No, you know what, Dick? Honestly, it shows just how much of a worldwide game basketball has right. become. These You're youngsters right. come from all over the world, and they learn the game now just about any place. Timeout. Let's go coast to coast with Dickie V. Well, I'll tell you one thing, Brent. Cincinnati's Logan at 41 last night was sensational. They can't wait for that payback game at Shoemaker with Marquette next Friday. Boozer and Baxter. I mean, that's going to be a matchup. I believe if you're Maryland, you got to attack inside and hope to get Boozer in foul trouble. And then Pepperdine and Gonzaga as you get an offensive rebound. What a matchup tonight at the Kennel. And Pepperdine sitting unblemished in West Coast Conference play. And I'll tell you one thing, it'd be a crime if both those clubs don't go to the NCAA tournament. I think that's a lot. They both belong in. Even the loser ultimately in that tournament. So here's Ellis Miles, sophomore from Compton, California, will attempt to complete the old-fashioned three-point play here. Louisville, See as Dick mentioned in the first half, under Rick Pitino, the team never quits. They'll, they'll keep hustling here. They may be outgunned, and uh, they don't really have that post presence that you would like that Dick has mentioned. And uh, they'll keep coming. Merritt. Henry's done a heck of a job. He gets it inside to Merritt, who's the guy they're hoping to give them post presence on the inside. Henry's done a solid job. He and Wade are outstanding on the perimeter, Brent. You can see how Marquette extends the defense. They know how Marsh. an offensive foul is called against Louisville. Take a look right here at Henry with that great no look inside. Merritt with the score, Scott Merritt. And then on the other end, they do it on a defensive end, and they take the charge. Mr. Blankson. And runs it down, and now Wade doubled, and so Blanks an open, and he knocks down the three ball. They might need a timeout, baby. This club is really playing well right now. They are excelling in every area. He needs a T.O., baby. He's not getting one here. Marquette headed for its 11th straight win. Just don't get much going down low, do they? Every so from the perimeter, and Gaines still can't get his game on track. Marquette has hit their last nine shots, make it ten in a row. Get a timeout. He's got to get a timeout, man. They need a T.O., baby. This place is rocking and rolling. Oh, my guy Al would be so proud of the hysteria that's here. It's Hoops Hysteria in Milwaukee. Back in 1977, Al McGuire and Marquette won the national championship and watch this last defensive possession. The defense has started everything as far as Marquette is concerned. No good shots down low. What a great job attacking the basketball. They rotate so well out of their defense. 
And they run it up the floor, and there's Mr. Wade. That's big time, Mr. Musburger. That's a big time move. He is so smooth. You mentioned 77. I had probably one of the greatest thrills of my coaching life. 21 in a row, my friend, and it was in Milwaukee that I did a little dance after we beat the Marquette Warriors the year they won the national title, and we beat them at the buzzer. And Al was not your good buddy that afternoon oh, yes, after was. that dance. He's a great guy. He was <laughs> super to me. He said, I'm walking the sandpaper part of town, he told the writers. Um, we had a heck of a team that year. I'll tell you, Brad, not my coaching. I had guys like Tyler and Long. Oh, that was a good team. Very NBA good guys team. you had. And I had a guy sit out. If he was eligible, I thought we would have won the national title. Remember Earl Curitan? Oh, yeah. He was sitting out. Big, As you look at Gaines. Big Earl struggling. and uh, Gaines. Oh, from the floor oh, here. For Marquette had one of seven overall from the field right yeah, now. Really strong. Marquette had a butch lead that year. Tremendous guard out of Clinton High School in New York City. Northern three is good. They got to get a fire with some threes, and they're capable of Gaines can go on one of his streaks. He made four in a row. Get him back in the game against them. Well, look at him handle a lot. Then he's out of control in the charges. He's got to pull up at the foul line. You young kids, you got to pull him out of the foul line. Doug Green, so that's okay. That's okay. Marquette is up by 14 with 15.45 to go. We've got a timeout. Yep, and this town is being painted with the colors of Marquette. And they seem well on their way to their 11th straight win against a Louisville team that has been unable to force turnovers here today like they normally do. Only forced three so far, normally 19. That's almost a better than a six to one ratio and not normally their game. I just can't wait to tell those people in Louisville to be patient. When Rick Pitino gets these kids next year, Dean and Garcia and the kid Dortez, you're going to see a change. And they are trying to recruit a superstar right now who they are close to. Off the iron and an offensive putback is good by Luke Whitehead. As Whitehead working on the glass inside. He's an experienced player, had some injuries earlier this year. They'd love to come up with one of their turnovers here and get a run started. I tell you, Henry does a great job putting pressure on the defense the way he brings the ball up the court. And Wade must have liked putting a show on against the kids from Chicago at 35 against the ball. Merritt backing in, and uh, Louisville got a chance now to put hoops together, get something started. I'm a complaint against right now. Game. Here's the three for Northern, and it's huge. An NBA three as he steps back. And Louisville making a bit of a charge. And that gets it under the 10 ball. Gets it down to nine. Psychologically, that's a lift. That's what that three ball will do for you. Give you a momentum, baby. Marquette would like to stop the run right now. And that's all part of his personality. He'll never allow his team to quit, Brent. Henry penetrates. Not a friendly bounce. And Louisville working on its biggest run of the game. This is an 8-0 run right now. They're on. Gaines would love to do something. Has to give it up, Hog. Inside. Got it. There's a 10-0 run for you. And a hoop by Miles. I tell you, they got to start thinking about a timeout. Louisville swung the momentum back their way. I think he's going to call one if they can get it across. They wanted one right now. Sir. They couldn't get the ball up quickly. And here is the timeout Marquette. It's a 10-0 run. Louisville right now as they close back to within seven. 13-56. I got to tell you, Dick, they get 22 off on his game. They'll be right there. They will not get blown out. But they need gains to start scoring. Yeah, they got to have him stepping up. A great job of passing the ball on the inside. Getting the open layup between Miles and Whitehead. Doing a great job moving the basketball and moving without the ball. You know, Nadenoff hit all three of his three balls in the first half. So they might be able to shake him loose from out beyond the perimeter. And a reminder now, Sunday night at 8 Eastern on ESPN, catch the season behind bars, part two, followed by Pardon the Interruption, Sports Century 1981, and Sidelines, L.A. Hoops, presented by Gatorade, all part of the block on ESPN Original Entertainment. 
You know, Brent, they've only shot 50% one time this year in Louisville. And that was a win over South Florida, showing their shooting woes. They are really coming out playing tough on the defensive end, though, now. Diener handling the ball, tries to go back door to Wade. Wade can't put it down, but the follow-up is good by Terry Sanders. Yes, yeah, Sanders, the energizer again with the good offensive rebound. That was great movement without the ball by Wade. And Gaines is still cold from the arc. He Wade's got thinking. it down off the miss. I think he's thinking so much rather than just play it. See, he's thinking on every shot. He's just got to shoot it, baby, like he's done in the past. Henry cut, o cut off, and the foul is against Gaines. Watch Wade now off the ball. Watch number three on Oh, this. he catches him staring at the ball, and he's got a little hole. They don't call the hole. Stevie, baby, you got to blow that whistle. There's the foul. I mean, he's holding him. Whatever. Gaines is, Gaines is going to sit there. Rick Patino is going to substitute for him right now and let him uh, let him sit down and think about it. I think that's a good move. You let him sit for a minute or two. Whenever a kid is struggling, that's a star, and he's been a star for them all year. At 37 Ooh. against St. Louis, 26 a game in his last four games. You take him out for about a minute. That's all he did. Take him out for about a minute. Sit. One, one for eight, and they're going to send him back in here. And, uh, See if they can't shake his game, his game loose, and Eric Brown will sit. Otis George is on the floor for Louisville. Louisville cannot win this game unless Gaines gets going. Absolutely agree. And a bad turnover. From behind the back, it's Wade. He'll oh, take it to nice the open pass. man. It was out of control. That's an offensive foul. That's a good call. Sanders. I don't think Sanders expected to get the ball back, folks. I think he thought Wade was going to attack the rack. Yeah, he really did. He was shocked. He said, what is this happening? The rock coming back to me. Look, he'll go around his back. He'll go around his back. Not for showtime, but to get free. And then he's under control. And there's the defense. Does a great job rotating over. Yeah, I'm not so sure Wade looked at him for a, for a fraction of a second, Dick. Uh, he should have seen that one coming. Got to communicate. They got to talk. You got to communicate. Open man and a bad pass. A turnover by Nadenoff. He had his teammate cutting to the basket and he threw behind him. And Patino knows they let one get away on that trip. Yeah, the whole staff did. Vince Taylor, former outstanding player at Duke. Nick Cronin, as you look at the turnovers, Louisville 12, Marquette only four. Diener handling the ball is number 10. Fine career ahead of him. And the kids have been saying to Dick, he's one of our diaper dandies. Yes, Thank you got to include him and uh, whistle down underneath. Well, he's a guy who gives him a stabilizing force. Doug Green's got a real star coming in next year. Steve Novak, 6'10", from right here in the state. Did you see the charge? The last great big kid in the state was recruited by everybody was Joe Wolf. Went to North Carolina. Yeah, the crowd saw this uh, replay on the replay board and they do not agree with it i'm not sure that i do either but it goes against <laughs> you know what we don't count though yeah, that's so about you got that right we don't have the whistle of the striped shirt i know I you were frustrated you were frustrated last night with that call oh my it's brown knocks one down you rarely do you see a, a bad call like that in the nba i think it was too obvious and uh, just couldn't believe that that eddie jones would put it back down after picking his dribble up that official will probably be fine, though, Dick, in the NBA for making a mistake like that. And the other two, of course, didn't help out. But here we've got Louisville chasing Marquette. They've closed back to within seven. Still right there. Full court press. So familiar with Patino coach teams trying to force a turnover if they can. And Marquette handles the ball well. Got away that time and out of bounds. You know, it turned the ball over their last three trips, and our coverage will return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Only one and a half minutes left in that game. I'll tell you how wide open and how tough is the SEC. The best, the best, absolutely the best conference in America from top to bottom. I don't think there's any doubt about it, Brent. Inbounds pass for Marquette. They lead it 58-51. 11:50 remaining here in regulation. Diggs is off the Marquette bench. He can shoot the three now. Wade is being rested. Merritt short. 
And a rebound by Louisville. They pull it down with muscle. That's Miles. And down they'll come, trying to inch even closer. See, I would post up right now, Gaines. He's got the little guy on him, Henry. He ought to rotate him inside. They've been posting him a lot more, inverting him in the last few games. He seems very passive tonight. You look at Gaines. He seems very uh, passive on the floor. So Louisville calls a timeout. Take a look at the... Uh, the shooting here. Louisville near 50%. And Marquette at 56%. They've hit 86%. That's good shooting for Louisville. They're last in the conference shooting free throws, shooting 59%. I'll tell you this, you know it's amazing. He's trying to be Mr. Patino, the fourth coach to take four different schools to the NCAA tournament. When you think of Jimmy Herrick, Lefty Drizel, and Eddie Sutton are the other three. All right, tomorrow on ABC, Syracuse faces Notre Dame in a crucial game for both teams as they battle for supremacy in the Big East Western Division. Texas will take on Kareem Rush and the Missouri Tigers tomorrow live at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific, right here on ABC. You know, here is a very interesting note. Rick Patino is out of timeouts, I was just told. Dick, that's too early in this game yeah, for him yeah. not to have a single timeout. Well, the reason, because he was trying to stop momentum. It looked like this game got away totally, so he used the timeout, and he's figured, I can't worry about that down the end. He used them very well, that's but you're be right. Tough it could be tough. To yes, go. sir. It'll be tough down the stretch, but this game could have got away if he didn't call timeout. Well, he's right back in it, so we'll yes, see sir. how that unfolds. But again, Louisville has now used up it's timeouts. He was an assistant. You mentioned Syracuse. He was an assistant to Jim Behai. Got married to his beautiful bride, Joanne. And right on his honeymoon, he got called to come down for an interview, and he did. He got the job with Mr. Beheim from out of Hawaii. He went from Hawaii to Syracuse. A little difference in change. <laughs> <laughs> Inbounds under their basket, short, one and out as Northern couldn't put the open look away for Louisville. Henry's been quiet. He's got to come up with a big play for them. As it was for the high screen. There it is. There it is. Mr. Henry right on cue, baby, using the high post screen. And the lead is 10 as a result. That's a veteran player, a stabilizer, a guy with experience, and that's what Cordell Henry has. Brown back at you, can't get the roll. Marquette up by 10 again. Diggs was open. Henry didn't want to gamble on the cross-court pass. Right now with Diener on the court, he becomes the second guard, the scoring guard, and Diener the point guard. Henry on a runner and out there, but Namaka puts it back up and draws the foul. And now Blankson checks in, and what's interesting about this run by Marquette, Wade not on the floor for them. They're using that screen. Cordell Henry, the high post screen. You got to step out on that screen. I'll tell you, kids like Namaka, Blankson, that's why you win. You got to have guys willing to sacrifice, lay screens, rebound, do all the little stuff that it takes you to get to the winner's circle. And they've got great guard play. Cordell yes, Henry, the 5'10 senior from Chicago, knows how to run the point. That's why I think this Marquette team is going to be dangerous come tournament time, whether it's in Conference USA down in Cincinnati or in the big dance, the NCAA. They certainly will be one of the 65 teams. Remember, there's a playoff team for that 60 fourth spot. You know, Brent, we're here in Wisconsin. What about a salute to Bo Ryan? What a job he's doing with Wisconsin. He beat Minnesota today. He yes. beats Marquette when they play Marquette. Off Brown's hands. That's Marquette basketball. Well, time for many. Stay tuned for the UBS Payne Weber postgame report with John and Digger. They will be along. And have all the scores and highlights to show you how Georgia did it again to Kentucky. A little turmoil we hear down there in the bluegrass and uh, hopefully they'll get it together come tournament time the Wildcats are lot expected of, to be one of the powers this year a lot of players on that club down there in terms of Bogans and Prince but they've had some suspensions transfer guys getting I mean tell not going to take any nonsense he's the boss Merritt Steele spins Great offensive rebound by Blankson. He's a big-time rebounder. He had 13 rebounds against Louisville in the first matchup. He had 16 this year as well. I like him, man. I tell you, doesn't get a lot of PR. Marquette sitting on a 10. A Bo Derrick just sitting down. Wow, Bo Derrick, a 10. Shot clock will run down inside a 10. And on the run, Henry uses the glass. 
They got a little isolation, a little one-on-one. -on -one. But a kid from the Whitney City, and he converted. Oh, what enthusiasm here. They got the towels waving. Louisville quickly to the attack. Ball knocked out of bounds by Henry. You know, I got to say hello to you from George Thompson, one of Al's first recruits. As you watch him working a little one-on-one -on -one maneuver here, he does the radio here for 24 years, was an outstanding player under Al McGuire. He was the leading all-time scorer at Marquette. They're uh, up above working on the radio. George Thompson, a great player here at Marquette. Jim Price here, too, doing a radio for Louisville, former Louisville star. 68 to 72, played in the NBA seven years. Gain steps out, and he still can't nail the three ball. He, doesn't he is look one of nine here today. He doesn't look like he's into the game in terms of Henry's passing. open. Missed the wide open look. Diener gets it back. I've seen him on a two. The games look so much better than what we're seeing here this afternoon. This is not the real Reese game. You know, he might be pressing because he's from Wisconsin. Trying to Madison, press Wisconsin. And, yes, sir. Uh, went down to Louisville. I know how badly he wanted to play well in this game today. Yeah, he's a great kid, according to Rick. Double, loose. Louisville's got it on the turnover, but that should have given it back. Almost played soccer with it. Was it was an inadvertent or a, <laughs> a sloppy, delivery sloppy kick play. that wasn't oh. recognized. Yeah, a little soccer there, a little kick in the ball. That wasn't now Barrett picked up the personal foul, his third. 8-24, still plenty of time to go here. The second chance points you see Marquette with 13 offensive rebounds and 13 points. Louisville. Ten points off eight offensive rebounds, and Louisville still looking for the three-point magic, something the Patino teams have always featured, and the foul on Wade. He was the first, I thought, when he put in that three-point line. Man, he made the kids take advantage of it down there at Kentucky and also at Providence. 1987, a year the general cut the nets down. Keith Smart, Indiana, he was there with Providence. From the corner. And a second chance. Not to be. A third chance. Finally, the foul is called. Oh, uh, should have been a foul before the walk. I thought it was a foul I there before too. the walk. I really did. I don't blame Rick being upset there. Miles working hard on the inside. How does he keep all that here? The guy's so good looking, it's unbelievable. It's a 12 point difference right now. Just inside of eight minutes to go. Look at a three-point shooting right now. 23 attempts, knocked down nine. Six for eight, much more efficient. Langston backing in, he travels. So they give it right back, and uh, now they're all even. And basketball go back to Louisville. Still time, but uh, they need some, some three-point magic. Timeout. sister of NFL quarterback Jim Harbaugh who once had a great career at Michigan that's Joni who's married to Tom Crean the coach here of Marquette and I said to Tom uh, how come you didn't become a football coach and he just laughed and he said well we got football in our background no question about that but he's all basketball here at Marquette third year and he's turned this team into a power great defense as Louisville has missed its last five shots they haven't had a field goal in their last four minutes and 40 seconds and they trail it by 12 and they all touch the floor all of the kids down at Duke indicating which time to play some tough winning defense our daddy's a pretty good coach in football Jack Western Kentucky Louisville now searching for some good shots Gaines penetrates and kicks it back outside. Here's Northern, the three ball, and uh, that'll get the Cardinals back in this in a hurry. Well, Northern's made some big threes for them. That's a big one that they need a little momentum there, get a little confidence, get that lead then. Now under 10, three possessions the way they shoot the three. A trap. To the corner now, and blanks it down with the left hand. Missed it. Battle underneath, and uh, timeout. So a quick call of a 
Timeout, and this week's Payne Weber Senior of the Week is Indiana's Jared Odell, selected for his contributions on and off the court. Big Ten Player of the Week averages 19 points, 11 rebounds. He was a big part of the Hoosiers' climb into the top 25. Off the court, though, Jared participates in several fundraisers, including Walks to Fight Cancer, and UBS Payne Weber donates $1,000 to its Senior of the Week scholarship fund in the name of Hoosiers senior Jared Odo. So we are in Conference USA land here today with the Marquette Golden Eagles looking for their 11th win in a row, a certainty to make the NCAA tournament this year, no question about it. And uh, my, my, look at that. Oh, wow, wow. And our attendant, Dick, this is the largest crowd ever to see a college basketball game in this state. Wow. All right? 18,753. Many of them here to get my Tal's autograph. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'll tell you this, though. You know, he's created a lot of excitement, but Tuesday night, Charlotte comes in. This kid, Joby Thomas, he can flat out play. You like play. him. Oh, Thomas can play. They beat Marquette at Charlotte. You know, you mentioned Odell. They got beat Indiana by Wisconsin, and they lost that game. Jared Jeffries didn't play, who I think is a lot for player of the year in the Big Ten. That's the third foul, by the way, on Gaines, who still He's struggling, struggling from the field. But, you know, a good player at any time can break out of it. He's one of nine, and that's four. Oh, my, number four. And this is really becoming... Uh, a disastrous homecoming for the young man. You really want to Yeah, here he is. I mean, you can't here. get away with that, though, Brett. You no, can't get away with that. Great. Made contact right in front of the official. He is just absolutely having a tough, tough afternoon. Struggling offensively, defensively. He's thinking too much today. Wanted to really show to home folks. And he's very aggressive after the ball and Wade. Loose. And Louisville couldn't get the handle. Fourth shot. Loose again, and this time the Cardinals come away with it. And maybe they can inch a little bit closer now on this trip. On the attack, the runner, no. Tougher shot than it looks when you're moving toward the basket like that. Yeah, not the kind of shot I think they really would have liked to have. They used that high post here. Well, Henry comes back at him. One and out. Good, strong rebound that time for uh, Miles. And now on the run, Gaines, and it's the foul is called. And Gaines works his way to the free throw line. He's a good free throw shooter. He's the one guy in their team that is a good free throw shooter. They shoot 59% as a team. I'll tell you one thing. Miles is a big time rebound. He averages 10 rebounds a game. Gaines should have done a little bit more of this, I thought, earlier in the game. Jump shot's not there. Attack the basket. This is a big foul on Wade because it's his fourth. That is four on Wade. That's as big a number as there is. And they're going to have to take him out right now at the 6.02 mark because of that fourth personal foul. I tell you and, how uh, the crowd did not like that call, Dick, at all. They, uh, they thought that Wade got ball as uh, Gaines makes the second one now at the six-minute mark. Well, you expect the crowd to feel that way here, but he got the hand there. Diener in and out, loose. Louisville running out, and there's a foul that's going to go against the Cardinals. Whitehead call for the foul. So, you know, talking to Brown, give him some coaching strategy. I mean, he coaches every possession, as does Tom Green on that sideline. So, Namaka with a one-on-one. -on -one. They were horrible in the first half on the free throw line. Got the front end so critical right now. Really big when you get down to stretch time. Oh, isn't it though? 13 on 0 at home, Marquette. Wow. This for a 10 point advantage. Didn't get it. Ball out of bounds and uh, goes over to the Cardinals. It's really interesting to see if they. Get four teams. I believe they'll be four out of Conference USA. This guy's got to get going. If you're a Louisville fan, he's got a break in the last five minutes. Winning players and really stars make it happen late. Working off the dribble right now. Kick to the corner. They attack from the wing, and it's good. 
Aaron Brown. 64 now, 57. Brown, a good score from the wing. They do a great job attacking the basket from the wing area, trying to get in a three-second area, and if the draw help, they kick it off. Managing the clock right now, spreading the court. He's going to be tough to handle one-on-one. Trying to spread the court, 3-2 set offensively. Don't want to sit on this lead too much. Don't want to become too passive. Want to hide the team shot. like Louisville. He's trying to buy time, but wait on the sideline. Henry, who's done a great oh, job yes. today. Great he up. has really done a job for Coach Crane and Marquette. He has been their ace player here today, running the floor, scoring at big moments of the game. Northern tied up, still shot it anyway. Offensive rebound, that's got to be something. Well, yeah, out of bounds. I thought he was pushed out. I but apparently he just dove out and goes over. Henry's done a phenomenal job handling the basketball against the pressure of Louisville, as well as making big baskets. They executed to perfection the 3-2 set. Spread the court, use the shot clock, land down, and then get the conversion. Full court pressure being set up by Patino's Cardinals right now. Muhammad checks in. Whitehead sits back down. They'll press Dean. Diener with the ball in the backcourt. He also... Double up. You in fact have two point guards on the floor. Gets away from Henry. Cardinals have got it. He'll come back down now, and here is Gaines, handles it, kick it into the right baseline. Muhammad works down hard. He should have shot it. He had a wide open shot coming down the right baseline. One too many pass passes that time. The other fellow was coming to rebound. As Patino handling the rock, he used to handle the University of Massachusetts. He was there when Dr. J was there. Take a look right here. There's should have taken that jump shot, trying to make that extra pass. Had a good look at the glass that time, Dick. He had an open shot that time, coming right down the baseline. Now here comes the double up. Watch, they're going to rotate into a double up. He scrambled. Oh, he got a charge right there before he pulled a block. It almost looked like they counted continuation on that shot. That's in the NBA, man. Wow. I think they got away with one here, Brandon. I'll let you. You're a rep. Let's see right here. Oh, no question. Oh, nice. Where's the, they got contact, you see it? I'm blind and I saw that, baby. <laughs> I'm laughing at me, I saw that I'm blind, man. Now Blankson, moves to the free throw line. Tenacious player. Yeah, he's done a good job. That's really a three point play now player. for Marquette. And the lead is 12 again, 4-11 now, Patino's Cardinals need the three ball they need someone to step up from outside the arc and loosen things up story the afternoon has been the defensive job on reese Gaines, averaging 26 a game in the last four games he has been non-existent this afternoon penetrates forces one one in out misses again one of ten struggle city now henry now he can yo-yo the clock yes he is spreading the court Taking time off that clock, playing without Wade right now. And Green keeps Diener out there, giving him two outstanding ball handlers. Both can shoot free throws. Muhammad will try to press the ball with his reach. A little shake and bake on a little guy. Oh, I love the little guy. Cordell Henry. You got to like this little guy. All these Marquette fans are all fired up. And they should be. They're headed for their 11th consecutive win. So, Gaines fouls out of the game. He had a bad afternoon, but he's had so many good afternoons. A total of five points. He's one of ten from the floor. You know, I think it's 77 and Al in that team. You remember these guys, Jimmy Boylan, when they had Jerome Whitehead, Bo Ellis, Butch Lee, Bill Neary, Bernard Toon. That's the club that won it for Al in 1977 when they beat North Carolina for the national title. And Al walked off the court in Atlanta. And that was it. You know, interesting, you speak about winning national championships, and we jump ahead to this year. Rick Patino is the first coach who's come to me head up and said, I think Kansas will win the national championship. He was a broadcaster last year, and he covered Kansas. 
and he said they're even better this year. He says maturity is starting to show when he watches that team on television. So Rudy Latino cool. goes out on the limb, and he is the first heavyweight to weigh in and say <laughs> that someone other than Duke is going to win the national championship. That, of course, balances my friends here today. <laughs> uh, what about Maryland? Uh, I think Duke's got a tough time tomorrow afternoon. I said the, the national championship. Yeah. <laughs> Duke cuts Three the nets 25. Down. Duke Marquette. cuts the nets down. Marquette doing a Duke great job. Patino disagrees. Patino uh, disagrees. Patino disagrees. It's the largest crowd ever to see a college basketball game in Wisconsin. And have they ever enjoyed this one here this afternoon on Milwaukee? The Marquette Golden Eagles are closing in on their 11th consecutive win. They forced 16 Louisville Cardinal turnovers here today. They're working on a 7-0 run over the last two minutes, and they're starting to pull away. They were favored by eight, and as you can see, they lead it 71-57, closing in on the final three minutes. Louisville basketball for Rick Pitino. Northern reduces that lead with that shot. I'll tell you, Brent, this game can be summarized very simply. Shutting down games and only turning the ball over nine times against a Louisville team that forces 19 turnovers a game. Dick Reese Gaines, along with Steve Logan of Cincinnati, they were the only Conference USA players to hit double figures every game this year. And Gaines was held to one field goal. Wow. One of ten for the And Steve Logan last night 41. put up 41. He outscored the entire Southern Miss team. Steve Logan will be MVP of this conference. And you can see that Marquette needs this W to get back into a tie with Cincinnati in the American Division. Two divisions in Conference USA. Memphis, the leader of the other one, a loser already today and struggling. Charlotte will come in here Tuesday night. Marquette very uneasy about that game. Charlotte on a roll. Digger Phelps talked about them at halftime. Toby Thomas and he's outstanding. exactly right. This Charlotte team could come on in here, Digger. Uh, even the fans, even the coaching staff, very concerned about that game on Tuesday night. They'll have another great crowd, Dick. Isn't it great to see a see a school turn around like this? Oh, great it's phenomenal. Great spirit. Hank Raymond spoke to him, the former coach. He took Marquette five times to the NCAA tournament. Rick Majerus was a super assistant to Hank and also to Al McGuire. Kevin O'Neill took him twice in 93 and 94. Mike Dean twice. We're still trying to mount that rally that can get them back. They've had some miracles in the Rick Pitino era down at Kentucky, Providence, and even at Louisville. He started with a one over Tennessee. He was down six with 31 seconds to go. So many great fans down there in Louisville. Oh, the, great the fans. Traeger, the Traeger family, my friend Bernard and, and his lovely wife, Jean, of course, through the years they have suffered. And, of course, they've enjoyed the great success I'm of the sure. Louisville Cardinals. They're so happy to have Rick Pitino running this team. Everybody with high expectations. They're giving him time. You ought, to, you ought to read the media coming out of Louisville. These people know it's going to take a couple of years for Rick to recruit his kind of players. No question. They're going to be a national force again, no doubt about that. Tom Jork did a great job when he hired Rick Pitino. I didn't think he'd get it done to AD. Yeah, but how about the so football coach? Hire. John L. Smith. John is good from Dean or John L. Out of Utah State. 11 and He's two. A great job there. 11 and 2. Won the Liberty Bowl. And also, next year, they play at home at a beautiful Florida state. state, baby. Yes, sir. It's coming in. Seminoles. Here come the Knowles. I think I'll go over one second. Yes, Papa John's got that stadium going for him. It's a gorgeous place yeah, down nice. there. John Schnatter. If big you stand up on the deck of Churchill Downs, you can see that stadium deck. You can? Yeah. Oh. If you, if you should come to the Derby sometime. Well, the people told me today to send him 100,000 to get me some horses. <laughs> he said, send a check for 100 G's. I said, I got to go see Musburger. He's going to me some cash. we will get you part of a horse. Knock <laughs> <laughs> on the free throw down. So it's a 13 point lead for Marquette. Final minute and a half. They did a great job defensively. And as I said, they came out with a plan to shut down Gaines who's been on fire all year for Patino, and they did a great job in con containing him this afternoon. Brown working against the Marquette defense, and uh, blocking foul is called. There's basketball fever here, you better believe it. There's also basketball fever at Freedom Hall. I think this year, this Louisville team goes to the NIT. Do you think they would love to have oh. Rick Patino in New York City? I mean, are you kidding? Do you think they'd get two home games? Hey, wait, wait. 
The last thing I read indicated that everyone who doesn't go to the NCAA is headed to the NIT no, this no. year. <laughs> Tiger Woods, Phil Mickelson, David Duval, Sergio Garcia. The Accenture Match Play Championship coming your way, and ABC's coverage begins next Saturday at 2.30 Eastern. Dick Vitel uh, out on a limb, selects Tiger Woods Tiger, baby. to win it. Man, Dick. <laughs> but Wednesday, I guess ESPN will have some coverage, too, coming your way in the early rounds. And, uh, our producer, Mark Loomis, tells me that uh, this will be a good tournament out there in San Diego this year. This kid was a star of stars today. Wade is certainly a super PTP -er, But this little guy, Cordell Henry, he ran the show today, and he was the star of stars. Oh, they're getting another win, but they better not look ahead to Cincinnati Friday with Joby Thomas coming here in Charlotte. Brown yanks down the rebound. Bobby Lutz, there's a guy who gets no publicity, Brent. You would love him as a coach down in Charlotte. Oh, bad pass, and Diener was right there in the passing lane. He'll bring it down, and here's our final 30 seconds. 11 in a row for Marquette. 22 and 3. They're going to go higher than number 11, and the last time they were that high was they were number 10 in the nation under Hank Raymond's. Reach for the stars because uh, Cincinnati, hopeful that they can wind up with a one seed. And now, folks, you've got to think that Marquette is dreaming of a two seed if they run the table the rest of the way. And that won't be that easy. They're going to have to rematch Friday Cincinnati night. Twice, yeah. probably. That's going to be hard down there. They gotta beat They'll be an underdog on oh, Friday yeah. night in that rematch. they got to beat them there Friday and then have to win the tournament. But never talk about a number two seed. Exactly. But they can get a three or a four here. 14 in a row. Look at us here. 23 game win streak moves on. Last loss was triple overtime last year to Denny Crum in Louisville. He told us he signed a long term extension. So anybody that's got any ideas to call his kid up, forget uh, about uh, it. He's signed. Uh, Bill Quartz is going to sign him up, and I don't blame him. Foul. Uh, will shoot free throws here over the uh, They were always a program that I sort of idolized. When I got the job in Detroit at Catholic University, I looked up here to Marquette. They were the standard in the Midwest, and you saw what Al did here, and I really believe that this program can be a giant. I mean, basketball can be so big here. You don't have football to deal with. They are the kings. Hey, Dick. As long as the coach doesn't get tired of those commutes to Chicago, they can be forced <laughs> up here, okay? I mean, there is talent galore down there in the Windy City. There was talent. There's no I'm doubt telling about you. it. That's why it's so tough seeing the poor struggle the way they have. Lost a lot of guys who left early, went to the NBA. Bobby Simmons, Steve Hunter, Quentin Richardson. It's all Marquette this afternoon, Mr. Musburger. Well, I enjoyed it, Dick. Yes, sir. Great and afternoon. The Golden Warriors have done it. 11 in a row. They sweep Louisville. 75 63 is your final score here this afternoon. And if you want to get details and other scores, ABC Sports Online. Go to ESPN.com and then punch in ABC Sports. Stay tuned. We'll be right back after this UBS Payne Weber post-game report coming up with John and Digger after this. So long, everybody.